we're going to give you a bit of information and insight on how to work with the power supply and how to install it inside the chassis. Now this is a pretty straightforward process, but like other processes within building a system, there are points of consideration that you do want to keep in mind. So as we talked about earlier, we've gone ahead and selected, selected this outstanding uh, high performance Seasonic Platinum Series PSU. Now one of the key advantages of this power supply is outside of the power topology, the quiet acoustics and the high end power delivery is that we have a fully modular design. Now for this fully modular design, this gives us the flexibility that we can go ahead and take the cables that come included in and just go ahead and connect just the ones we want. Now this gives us flexibility that when we're working inside the chassis, we can go ahead and run cables more efficiently, more effectively, and help to go ahead and actually even improve airflow. Now one thing that you do want to keep in mind is in some situations people decide to install just this power block inside of the chassis and then from there go ahead and make their connections. I find it generally easier to go ahead and add these cables first to the power supply and then go ahead and put it inside the chassis. Really it comes up to you in terms of what you feel most comfortable with and the way that your chassis is laid out. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, flip this guy back around and go ahead and take a look at the keyed in patterns. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, the power supply does have notching and the cables themselves also have notching. So we're just gonna go ahead and start to link these in. First one here is for motherboard power. And that's gonna be the 24 pin power connection. Next one here is going to be for the CPU power. And uh, these guys are actually even labeled. If you notice, uh, Seasonic has done an outstanding job here is that uh, they've gone ahead and given these cables even noted so that we know what we're working with. So next one right here is for the PSU itself. So we just need to find the corresponding eight pin. Okay, and that's gonna go there. We then have another connection and that's going to be our PCIe power. So this is for the graphics card. Okay, so that's one more that we're gonna go ahead and make a connection for. And if you notice right here, I try to go ahead and keep these all uh, contiguous or in a line as opposed to breaking them apart because that allows us to go ahead and keep a more effective strain of cables when we're doing our cable routing. And that allows us to go ahead and have things overall look a little bit cleaner and make it easier to cable tie. And now we've got, uh, I put, always put in as a supplemental option, I might not always need it, but I'd take the legacy Molex connections in case we need anything for supplemental power. So we'll go ahead and run one of those. And then from there we have our serial ATA. So this is going to be for our mechanical hard drives and for our SSDs. Depending on the amount of storage devices, you may need more than just one cable. Uh, the cables themselves usually carry the multiple connection points. So as you can see in this one, we have the ability to go ahead and have four drives attached. So I'll go ahead and make one more connection and that rounds out all the active connections that we're gonna need for our PSU. So next step is we're gonna go ahead and actually mount this inside of the chassis. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, install the PSU inside of the chassis now that we've gone ahead and made all the connections. So we're gonna take our Seasonic Platinum Series PSU and go ahead and install it. You can see in this section right here, this bottom mounting area, this is where the power supply would go ahead and mount towards. Um, here is the actual exposed portion uh, that has the the screw, screw holes and thread points for it so that you can go ahead and fix the power supply in place. Now, if you remember earlier, we've discussed about airflow considerations. For this chassis, you can see right here that there's the, the fan, okay? And so we're gonna actually have this position at the bottom because that's actually uh, the way that this chassis has been designed is that we have intake and exhaust capabilities in terms of this portion of the chassis. So we're gonna go ahead and take this and get it rested inside there. I'm gonna use my handy CPU cutout here inside of my chassis to go ahead and give me secondary portion to be able to play with. So you can see right there, I've gone ahead and got it rested into place. Key, you wanna make sure that everything feels flushed and finished and fit. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and take the four screws that come included with the PSU and go ahead and get this guy screwed into place. Okay. So it's gonna be a pretty straightforward process once we go ahead and uh, get the power supply all tightened up here. We're then just gonna go ahead and make some quick adjustments in terms of selecting the areas of where we wanna go ahead and pull through all the corresponding power connections as far as for the molded cutouts of the chassis. And that's gonna be something you just wanna take a little bit of time to plan out because it's gonna help you to make sure that uh, you effectively route your cables in relation to the corresponding distance for the items that you have, as well as go ahead and helping to maximize the overall uh, aesthetics of the system in terms of cable tying and cable routing. So you can see now here that we've got our PSU successfully installed. It's not going anywhere. It's smooth in place. So next up, let's go ahead and go ahead and take a look at where we're gonna go ahead and pull through the cabling. 
Okay guys, so here we're going to show you how to go ahead and route the cables from the PSU through the actual molded cutouts on the inside of the chassis. Uh, now this is a pretty straightforward process, but you do want to keep in mind that there are a couple of points to consider before you pull through the cables. One is you want to try to be consistent with where you're pulling the cables through, as opposed to routing them through any just available cutout. Um, that's just going to make things easier in terms of being able to tie everything together and keep the cleanest overall aesthetic and minimize any type of eye source. Um, the other item too is that once once you pull through, you're going to want to tighten it up, keep it clean, and that's when we're going to distribute them out to the corresponding points as far as where they make a connection to, whether it's going to be the motherboard, whether it's going to be for the ODD, the storage device, or whatever it might be in terms of the connectivity. So from here, uh, we're just going to pull them through. We've decided to go through this bottom one to keep things consistent and tight and clean. And we're going to want to try to pull through in a kind of sequential order in terms of how we have them connected on the power supply itself. So you just want to pull through lightly. You don't want to pull with too much force because it might cause the actual um, rubber grommet that seals the molded cutout to pop out. So we're going to first pull through this 24 pin power connection. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, we've got that one. We've got the CPU power next up there. And you see how I'm pulling them back through and that helps to keep things really nice and tight. You guys can see that right here. Makes things really easy when we're working uh, with how to do the cable tying. We've got another one here for our Molex. So we'll pull that through also. And next up we'll go to our, our top connector. So we've got our PCIe power for our graphics card. Okay. And then we've got our serial ATA. Okay, so you can see right there, guys, we've gone from having now all these cables outside here. Now they're really tightly, cleanly pulled in. Now at the back, we've got just one single line, and we can start to go ahead and work with this and be able to run things to the corresponding points. But before we actually get to that, now that we've gone ahead and installed the, the power supply, we've gone ahead and installed the actual cables, and we've gone ahead and, and routed them through, we now actually need to mount the motherboard because that's going to be dictating where a lot of these cables are going to run back through these cutouts back to their connection points. Okay guys, so that's how you install a power supply as well as route the cables for the power supply.